everybody. Uh, uh, I apologize for the late start on this seminar. We had, as usual, technical issues getting things going. Um, uh, so uh, uh, let me make sure one more thing here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it is uh, a pleasure for me to welcome our uh, speaker today, uh, uh, my uh, colleague and friend, Lei Zhou. Uh, Lei uh, uh, got his PhD from MIT. I don't quite remember how long ago, uh, <laughs> okay. but, uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, he, uh, he's uh, been, um, he and I started our faculty positions at about the same time, so I'm guessing that was probably around 2000, what? Five, six, seven. Oh, I graduated 2004, and, 2004. Uh, and working company. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so he's uh, uh, been a professor at uh, uh, Stony Brook University first, and then he moved to uh, Virginia Tech after a few years, and he's he was there until uh, just uh, a couple months ago, and then he moved uh, here to join us in the Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering uh, Department at uh, the University of Michigan. He has a very long resume full of uh, uh, accomplishments and uh, uh, awards and so forth. But in the interest of time, I'm going to skip over all that and let Clay uh, start his seminar. So please uh, uh, join me in welcoming Lisa. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, uh, for the afternoon, I'm going to talk about control code design. Okay, and you can call the control, you can call you feel it's more like it is that okay so uh out this out of my talk i first talk about the ocean wave energy then i will talk about one example and the success for what is the failure okay so this motivates us to think about design for control control for design or control for design then i draw a conclusion so um before I go to the technical detail, I would say a lot of things is ongoing. The result is not perfect yet. Okay. So the several slides about the ocean wave background. Okay. And the blue energy, blue economy are very important in the ocean side. There are all kinds of more energy, especially ocean wave, tidal current, the ocean current, river current. So take the wheel as, as an example, right? The wheel and uh, Theoretically, total energy resource is more than that of the electricity generated in the country. Uh, technical feasible, the energy harvestable energy is from ocean well is one third of the electricity needed in the country. So, well energy, the power density is pretty large. So, this map shows east coast, west coast, uh, west coast okay. And you can say, uh, usually, West side, uh, west you have 30 to 40 kilowatts per meter and east 10 to 20, okay. So if you consider all the efficiency, you put a one meter device in the water, you can get two to three kilowatts. So compare with sonar, sonar, right, if you, uh, you in the, the sun energy 1.5 kilowatts per hour, you consider efficiency, you have 10, you have 100 or 200 watts. Similar is wind energy, right? Uh, what I want to say, the ocean wave energy, the power density depend on the wind period and also height. So it is uh, practically the power density is one order larger than the solar. So and uh, in United States, there's no single wave energy converter connected to the grid. Uh, DOE is put on all the effort push in this direction. And this side shows the DOE's vision, okay? And uh, how to use energy instead of power, CT or power village. Pa this one is more called powering blue economy. So we can use energy to power underwater monitoring, power robotic system, power fish farm, right? Power water desalination, even you can get energy from the, uh, using ocean wave energy to produce um, a mineral, for example, the nissum and the mechanism, even hydrogen. Okay, so um, so when I first get into this uh, area, it's about 2010, 2011. When I read a review paper by Dr. Fakao, it's a pioneer in the field, 
and he built the first European wave energy converter, the power grid is in Pico Island in Portugal. Okay, so uh, it works like this way, look like a uh, bucket upside down, the wheel move up and down, drive the air in and out. So they use wheels turbine to generate energy. This wheels turbine, no matter you wheel, wheel in and wheel out, the generator always rotate one direction. So uh, then that is the first trial of uh, ocean wave energy farm in 2018. The device operated for several months is shut down. Okay, this is the first trial. I say two megawatts wave energy converter, ocean slick. They is more like this terminator and they, this motion, they draw the piston. Then piston draw the high pressure fluid and through this check valve, then an accumulator, then the fluid rotate one direction. Then hydraulic motor draw the generator. And this one, you, you also say the generator will rotate one direction and even the wheel and the piston is in two direction rotation. So this system is so complicated the field. Okay, so and uh, Dr. Falcao in his review article in that time, he said, okay, power takeoff is a single most important element. So before that, I have some work on the ocean energy. Uh, I didn't work on the ocean energy before 2010. I mostly work on the turbulent energy harvesting and concentration. I, this is, that is the first time I read proposal with Jeff. Okay, so, and then, uh, then I have some human appearance part take off the machinery that convert uh, mechanical, energy, mechanical energy into electricity. So we develop this part take off. Wait, what's going on? Okay, so this device, so, uh, Okay. Oh, okay. So I will show you this uh, this device. Um, and yeah, you see say. Your eyes are coming too fast. My computer show up. That computer didn't show up. Let me see. So it's fine, and I can continue without the depth since we're already made. Anyway, so this device is will move up and down when then generate electricity. Like will move up and down, we draw the boss screw, boss screw draw one generator. In between, we have special gearbox, and this back gearbox allow the motion transmit two direction into one direction, right? So as I mentioned, that people try very hard using fluid using air and to draw, draw the bi-direction motion into one direction. We can design one very compact mechanical gear to draw the motion from two directions to one direction. The key component is the one-way clutch. So it's similar to our bicycle gear. So in one direction, this bicycle gear, this part uh, like bicycle gear or one-way clutch get engaged and motion transmitted directly. On other direction, this disengaged. So it's transmitted through that way. So that is look like an electric voltage rectifier. The only thing is that we replace the semiconductor diode with a one-way clutch. So meanwhile, we use the flamware to mock up the um, smooth capacitor. Okay, so I draw my computer, but I cannot draw. We know the controllability. Okay. <laughs> so I can drop that, but I just want to update because you run, I think. Um, Nice, you. yeah, because you're not in the slideshow there. Okay, click down next, please. Goes nice, you. Okay, now it's fine. Look like I can control. 
Okay. So uh, that is we call the mechanic motor rectifier. However, our idea is to not generate a DC voltage. Instead, we want to have high efficiency, high reliability, high, and uh, high compactness. For example, the generator, if I rated power, you have 90, 95% efficiency. But if the velocity is low, and uh, no, most time when you cross zero, the efficiency can be 10% even less. So mostly the efficient side also reliability. Okay, so and we build a prototype, we test it in the tank and also in the ocean. So in this, we have different resistor to have different uh, performance and we use special power output. So now wheel to wear efficiency is related with two parts. One is the structure that capture the wheel and convert the wheel energy into mechanical energy. Another part is mechanical energy to electricity, the part of, in the best case, up to 50 or 80%, and depend on rotation, right? If the speed is a very, very irregular, the efficiency is low. Overall, and the structure side, we try the different structure, we get different capture width ratio or hydraulic efficiency. The power put look like that way. So overall, wheel to wire efficiency about 20%. And very important part, I want to highlight the peak to every ratio is very, very high. And typically in two digits, right? So uh, that means like you drive a car, you need to put a jet engine in your car. The efficiency is bad. OK, so also overall cost is high. So now. I want to say this is exciting innovation, right? But the failure. I told you why failure. Okay, so we convert, we design captures, we will, we first design the we will capture structure first, like buoy and tank. Then we have we have energy from the relative motion between the two. That's the capture with ratio, that's a hydraulic efficiency. After that, we design the PTO then uh, convert the mechanical energy into electricity. We saw his excellent design because now we convert the bi-direction motion into one direction. People try so hard to design different systems, pneumatic, hydronic system. We have very compact gearbox. Now it is turned out to be failure. Why? We use one-way clutch inside. As I mentioned, one-way clutch is similar to your bicycle gear. And when you drive your override your bicycle upstairs or flat road, no problem. Down here, you need a break, right? Because now your pedal cannot control your bicycle anymore. Same thing here. Now, if your generator rotates fast, the generator and the wheel structure side is disconnected. So the system lost controllability. So on the other side, now you cannot uh, implement any reactive control because the energy cannot go through the generator from the structure side. So we have to think about other design. So this is control core design, the, why I need that. So for control side, it can play important role. However, for wheel energy side, the most important driver is donors per kilowatt hour, right? The SOE. And it's related with capture expense operation divided by total energy. So, and control can play important role here. For example, with the control, we can increase the power output. That is the denominator, we can increase that, right? And control, we can also uh, reduce the numerator side. How to reduce the numerator? We reduce the peak to average power ratio. I mentioned that one, you drive a car, you put a jet engine, right? right? The reason is peak to average ratio is high. So now with the control, we can achieve such kind of significant in decrease the SOE with the minimum cost. Okay, so uh, you need to reach sure there are not work done in the past or a couple of decades. I put some uh, work here, okay. So, so this is the children would work and also George and in uh, in Cindy uh, National Lab and the GF also did excellent work in this control side for the wave energy converter. Overall, you can say 
and uh, we can increase the power output by two to three factors by implementing the control instead of using passive PTO. So how to understand the control side? Let us put a very, very simple illustration. Okay, so you put a buoy in the water, right? You connect a buoy and say bed with PTO, right? That can be linear generator, rotational generator like that. When you write the dynamic equation, right? This Newton's law, uh, so this is mass time velocity where there are excitation force here, right? The wheel, you get pressure, right? This is excitation force. And then we have radiation force. Radiation force here include the two parts. One is added mass. Added mass means when the buoy move up and down and the water surrounding the buoy is moving, there's, energy, there's a chaotic energy there. There's a added mass. Second part is radiation damping. When the buoy move up and down, you steer the wheel, wheel propagate out. So you lost energy, it acts as damping. So uh, this is radiation force. You have uh, hydrostatic stiffness that is related with cross water wetland surface area time there uh, moving up and down. Okay, this buoy is a force. So then you have PTO force, right? So now our goal, Given this dynamics, our goal is to maximize the power output, which is the force time velocity. This is mechanical power output, right? You can do one more step, take PTO dynamics into consideration, electric circuit consideration. You can have voltage, time, current. This is electric power. Okay, so now uh, for this control, you can say this objective function is really, really different from most of the place. And for example, vibration, we want to minimize the vibration cost, right? And if you have a robotic system, you want to minimize the trajectory error, right? Trajectory. So now we maximize the power subject to the dynamics and all the constraints, including displacement of velocity and maximum PTO force. So it's different from normal control problem. So uh, how to achieve that, right? We can put it in that way. This is our plant, and uh, that plant uh, we actually is from the total force to the velocity output of the buoy. So this is uh, impedance. So uh, when you write that the plant, there's radiation, there's physical mass, added mass, and also stiffness item. So that's our plant. So the force come up to part excitation force, physical force because the radiation force already put this into plant. Okay, so to achieve such kind of control, we will zoom very, very simple transfer function, right? So that is the PTO force and you measure velocity. So now to implement the control and given the power output, that is force time velocity, you will find this expression. So the total output power is related with the excitation force is related with the control feedback game and the plant. So to maximize power output, you will find you need to help complex conjugate of the plant. So, and basically that means we need to match the frequency and match the damping. So if you have single frequency, it's very, very easy to do, but you have, unfortunately, the wheel is not a single frequency, right? So this is why you have complex conjugate to um, guarantee the performance at all the frequencies. So the problem is now, if you have such kind of complex conjugate, you will find this is a long causal, right? You cannot implement that. So one way is you can use uh, rational, uh, so you can use a causal function to approximate this complex conjugate. That is ICC control. So, and another way is we convert this wave energy converter into tracking problem. For example, I mentioned that the, uh, the, uh, the idea that will be the com uh, complex conjugate, right? So you have an idea velocity output given the uh, force excitation. The reference, this is K1S actually is the two add together. 
Now, if you measure the excitation force and you can generate a reference velocity, then you drive this PTO, then you achieve, uh, you, you make sure that the, we want to convert the velocity track the reference model, right? This is one way to do the control. So unfortunately, there are some problems here. And uh, with excitation force, you cannot measure, right? And you, this is why a lot of papers that talk about use different way to estimate the force. So this convert into checking problem. So, and in time domain, the, I talk about this frequent domain. Okay, now time domain, the what they control, okay. Now the transfer function, you can, this is a frequent domain, right? You can convert into time domain. Time domain, this is added, uh, added mass is frequency dependent. Radiation damping is frequency dependent. Citation force is, is frequency dependent. And the frequency dependent, you convert into uh, the time domain. And first item is easier to understand. Okay, you can use a Cummings convolution. And uh, so this one, you can use impulse response state space or approximation, it's fine. And you, this H itself, it is, uh, so it's called an impulse response, really not, a, how, why is it called impulse? Actually, it's a step response, depending on you look into velocity or displacement. And the impulse is, the response is given velocity, okay. It's a step response, basically a free decay, okay. So you can use experiment method or using CFE to calculate the impulse response. This part is done. And the complicated this part, this is the excitation force, right? The excitation force, I said you cannot measure the force to the buoy to drive it up. Uh, one way you say, okay, I measure the wheel, right? And when you measure wheel and use a wheel to calculate the excitation force, this is not causal. And uh, why is it not causal? You can think that way. And you use CFP given the wheel excitation you calculate force and you need a boundary condition, right? The boundary condition, all the directions. But the result, when you do the time domain integration, this convolution will not be zero to T, will be net and uh, will be let you infinity. Basically, uh, it, I will say that way, it depend on the future will. So that makes sense complicated. And now you can use the LQG, MPC, or kind of control to um, maximize or minimize function. Okay, here you can say again, that is wave energy control is different from traditional control problem. Traditional control problem, they, they take LQG example, right? LQR, you want to minimize or maximize, minimize, okay. And this is cost, okay. Usually you ignore the off that, this off diagonal term in the matrix. Uh, for us, this is off diagonal is our power. We try to maximize, so it's different. Okay, so that is time domain. And uh, I want to use the uh, Jung Wood slide to summarize the control challenging for wave energy converter, right? And typically, for example, you control when or you control room temperature, you give step response like that. Before you give, uh, give control, after you give control, right, you minimize some error. Like a wave energy side, before you implement the control, the buoy move up and down at a small amplitude. Once you implement the control, the buoy move upside down more, right? So therefore, that is uh, different from traditional control problem because the coordinate is non color inside. Another thing is now the amplitude become larger and larger Then this system. We have to consider all kind of nonlinearity. So this I highlight control challenging, right? Now, I also multi, uh, mo motivated why we are thinking about this problem. You design, P, uh, with structure side, you design PTO. You give this problem to control engineer, control engineer don't know what to do because you're not a controllability. So you cannot do anything. So this is motivated us to think about design for control. 
okay, or control the core design, control and design at the same time. So this will we will capture structure side this PTO this control. So we consider all the things at the same time structure side PTO and control. And so uh, if you consider that one now, this given way we input we need to design this structure, and then we need to design PTO at the same time. So we have to consider the strong coupling in between. You said, okay, I design a power fed structure, then you design a PTO, another person work on the control. So you can put in this framework, this excitation force, this structures, this part, this structure impedance. Okay, so this PTO's impedance, you, you have force velocity input, you have generators voltage and current, right? Then you have control network, whatever you put here. So this is a control for, uh, framework. Now, uh, I mentioned this is a six and four failure, right? So it's, it's interesting design, but we failed. We cannot do the control. Uh, you think about electric domain, and uh, there are two most important elements. One is a transistor. Uh, another is a diode, right? So now, in electric domain, there's a, instead of passive rectifier, there's an active rectifier. Basically, we replace this semiconductor diode with transistor. Now we can control the current go in and go outside. In that way, the battery or whatever voltage here can drive back, or our generator can drive the wave energy converter. Okay, so, we create such kind of in a mechanical domain, we create such kind of active uh, motion rectifier. Okay. Uh, I have my background in automotive engineering, so I find one, one thing that we can borrow in the car side is electromagnetic clutch. Like when you push your IC con air conditioner button, then the pressure compressor start working because there's a uh, electromagnetic clutch. So now uh, you know, we replace this one-way clutch, passive one-way clutch with electromagnetic clutch. We can implement control. So in that way, if we see one-way clutch engage, we direct and transmit, right? So then otherwise we disengage this one, we engage this one, this transmit this part in that way. We achieve this result. So the generator rotates always one direction. Meanwhile, we can choose which one we clutch to engage, disengage. We can draw the buoy or flap in two direction rotation. So now this we keep the control beauty. Okay. And then let us uh, take a look how to implement the control to say what kind of advantage we can achieve. This is will capture structure. This is a uh, system we designed active motion rectifier. We simplified it in that way. We didn't talk about the gear transmission. Anyway, if there's a gear transmission converting to another direction. Okay, so uh, we have flyware to choose, right? Then now we have generator. Generator, we can have voltage current the relationship. Now we can implement the control. So the design, the freedom we can design is when, when to engage, disengage this clutch, and how large the flyware to choose, what kind of control strategy we take. So uh, now this look like easy problem, not that easy, because when you control the clutch side, it's discrete event. You either control this one or control this one, right? Now this part is continuous. So uh, we did some preliminary work. We control or we consider the regular wheel. Regular wheel is sinusoid wheel, and ocean wheel usually is multiple frequency. Okay. Uh, we want to say what's the best potential for the for the regular wheel. As I mentioned, oh, okay, and uh, we just need to control timing. 
you engage this one, this engage this one, this one thing we control. And uh, all other thing is we have very simple control. We put PD control, basically uh, uh, control the stiffness and adapting. So, uh, so this is a parameter to be controlled. So we engage, disengage, then during the time, period of time we optimize the PD again. So, and uh, we implement such kind of thing you test red. And uh, I will not go through this tank test. And I, oh, this is the important part I want to mention, okay. And uh, we are, we are control engineer, we also need to be mechanical engineer. For this one, instead of put this into the generator into the hinge, they put a generator on the top. And now we have a curved beam. Curved beam look like a belt. And then you have, no, you have not a pony, right? Then you have small pony. Then you can easily implement the gear ratio up to 100. So, anyway. So this is, uh, uh, instead of, okay, uh, like some people say, okay, you can use gear. I can easily use 100 gear ratio. The question is 100 gear ratio, the efficiency is very, very bad. Now, the efficiency is just one stage to mission. Okay, so, uh, that is the result, okay. And given the wheel excitation period, uh, we said a, a regular wheel, right? We optimize the uh, engage disengage time. We op also optimize the PD gain. And that is the uh, one is um, the system with active motion rectifier, another is system, the traditional system, we don't have active rectifier, the baseline. Okay, so you can say with active motion rectifier, and we can double the power. Sure, it depends on which frequency your excitation, right? Like this one, if you have perfect cancellation of, I wouldn't say cancellation. You have perfect plug. That means you chill the resonance, exact resonance. You cancel the stiffness and inertia. Meanwhile, and you match the perfectly matches that pin, you can get the best result already. You don't need such kind of PTO. Okay. Uh, and uh, at the other frequency, you can say with this PTO, we can double the power. Pin. So that is a regular wheel case where uh, in regular wheel case, we are still work on that. Okay. So Okay. Not repeat again. <laughs> okay. So and. Uh, so this uh, we, this uh, uh, experiment validation this uh, is done in collaboration with Symbian National Lab. Okay, uh, uh, one is uh, this figure shows excitation force, another is flap velocity, generator velocity clutch. We achieve the result the excitation force almost in phase with the flap velocity excitation force is estimation we cannot measure. Okay, so now, uh, and I want to give, give one example about uh, uh, PTO, PTO control for design. As I mentioned that, okay, we need to control the PTO control at the same time. And we give this is using this flap design as example of curved beam. Now, uh, flap geometry is given, that means uh, this impedance zi is given. 
we want to optimize the PTO, optimize the control at the same time, right? So the system to be permitted to be optimized, including the flyware in the system, including the PTO dumping in the system, including the PTO stiffness. Okay, so then uh, the inertic side control domain, we want to implement uh, the they optimize the gener this PTO generator, uh, generator's inductance and or also the resistance in the PTO. Okay. And then we need to design the control side. So basically, we want to design the plant, partial plant. I will say partial plant because we only consider PTO self. We didn't consider that. Okay. Partial plant and the control at the same time. So we convert this system, uh, the mechanic system into, into electric circle modeling, right? This is uh, the flap, this impedance, the PTO side, and this electric domain, and this force velocity and voltage current. This is the electromagnetic coupling of the generator. Here we need, we consider a gear transmission ratio N and the inertial magnetic coupling coefficient. So for this uh, optimal control, we consider two performance. One performance is mechanical power, right? How much power we take from ocean wave to the mechanical domain, okay? Another electric power, how much power we can really, really deliver outside. So this mechanical energy and uh, uh, is the force time velocity or torque time rotation speed, the electric domain voltage time current. So uh, this, uh, we did a numeric optimization and this shows the result. I want to highlight that if you optimize the mechanical, uh, this is paper shows optimal PTO case and the suboptimal PTO case. If you only optimize the control without in Consider a PTO side, you can get a very, very worse result. For example, if you give it the mechanical uh, PTO, you try to optimize the mechanical power input, and you may even get a negative power output. Right? So now you, con you consider PTO and the control performance at the same time, and you can achieve better performance or optimal. Okay. So now, as I mentioned, this will only control the PTO and control at the same time. We didn't control, consider wheel energy structure yet, right? So to implement that control, we have to consider the wheel flap or buoy structure. And uh, this is a very preliminary work we have done. I show you now. Instead of only optimize the PTO and control, we want to optimize the PTO control and the wheel structure first. For example, for this one, we optimize, we consider the flap width and flap height into consideration. Now we optimize our whole system. And if in the uh, control, we put it into control core design work is more like numeric optimization, is a multiple loop. Right, you optimize P control and PTO. I explained this the sense we have done, right? Now you optimize the shape. When you optimize shape, the hydrodynamics is very, very complicated. You're given the geometry, and for example, now you have two geometry, the height and the width. Each time you can when you do this calculation, the plant take this side, the plant change, right? Then you have to do many, many iterations. Such kind of hydrodynamics calculation take time. And you, you use a CFD to calculate that. For example, the, you saw levi stokers equation. You take, you take a usually very, very simple structure. It takes weeks to solve that. If you use a potential flow basis, then you still take a 10 minutes and 30 minutes. So it takes effort to do that. So what we want to do, the bridge, the structure shape of this amazing and the control side, we use a neural network here. So as I mentioned that way, you want to optimize the buoy, 
you use then this up quite time it uh, take minutes even this very simple shape we take five to ten minutes if you make more complicated it take longer time so then iteration take a lot of effort now instead of go through this effort what we can do is we use a neural network and first we parameterize this chip and then we use NSAs calculate the case of the training data. Training data, this is you have buoy shape, you have hydrodynamic coefficient, right? So you use a neural network. After the, you train in the neural network, everything can be done in milliseconds. You calculate hydrodynamics. Then with this hydrodynamics, then you can calculate the best PTO and the best control. So this optimization can be done much faster. Instead of you do three software, for example, bring up and say, uh, bring up solid works, uh, draw the figure about geometry, then use the NCs and calculate the coefficients. Now run the main lab to do the control PTO optimization. Now this can be done quickly just in main lab. So and we did such kind of study and basically try to use a neural network to optimize to for the control core design optimization, including the structure, including the PTO, and also the controller. So, okay. Uh, I, uh, this is almost the end of my talk, and I want to say in my group, and we work on mostly wave energy converter design and drive the research convergence. Uh, so, and meanwhile, we also uh, we also work extend our work to the powering polyglomy to use the ocean wave to power desalination, like water desalination to power ocean wa water monitoring and to provide the power to underwater robot. Okay, so. Uh, in recent three years, I also extend my research to the ocean current energy and also ocean wind energy. So this conclusion, I want to point out. So uh, wave energy converter is so far, there's great potential. And however, we don't know which wave energy converter is best. It's different from wind energy, right? So to do that, and we need to have system level consideration from wave to wire or from wave energy to the user, right? We need to consider the capture structure and we, talk, we need to consider part of And power electronics is very important. I didn't talk too much on the power electronics. And then we have to optimize the overall system at the same time. So for this one, you need knowledge into different domain. I welcome all collaboration from different aspects, including uh, vibration dynamics, where my training was okay, and also control mostly is uh, uh, the time when I do PhD study. And uh, in the company, I also have design experience, okay. And now environment manufacturing is important because in the ocean it's really, really hard to maintain the certain corrosion, storm, these all are important, including the economic big business side. So we need a really, really multidisciplinary research and cross partner collaboration and the university, industry, and government. So uh, in my group, and I still didn't give my name or the group yet. I'm thinking Marine Lab or Pedro Lab. Okay, so uh, I hope to recruit some PhD students to talk and join us to draw the research emergency. Especially, I need one to talk in the control side. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you getting us basically back on time. Uh, um, so uh, we have time for a few questions, uh, if there are any. Um, uh, if, if you're uh, watching uh, via Zoom, uh, if you'd like to post your question uh, okay. in the chat, uh, we can monitor that here. It looks like there's already one in the chat. Okay. 
All right. Uh, so questions. Sorry, I talked too quick <laughs> because after that I need to run to the airport. Another <laughs> <laughs> trail. from the audience. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm from Taiwan. Uh, yeah. Some specific neural network method for this. There are many ways. For this one, we try to uh, we use a very very simple neural network. We have three layers and uh, fifty neuron. It's more like a direct feed forward type of the uh, waking function. If we are looking to different neural network to reduce the number of training data. May I have, yeah. and I, you know, of course I have questions. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, yeah, I've, uh, we've, we've talked about uh, your um, uh, your clutch system a yeah. number of times. Um, so I, I guess uh, you didn't say much about how you were doing the discrete event control to switch the clutch on and off. Uh, uh, okay. So, so in your in your uh, uh, in your example, it was a sinusoidal wave. Yes, yeah, sinusoidal wave. Okay. Um, have you have you figured out a way to do this for stochastic waves yet? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> All right. So this is why I said a lot of work here is ongoing work. It's not perfect yet, and uh, we only try. We we have some try on the stochastic wave and. Uh, the result is not going negative. <laughs> so, so uh, Matt Foley did some work on uh, on, on these uh, discrete event switching uh, uh, systems for uh, just for the flat for a certain sort of way. I guess you're working with him. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, right. And we have one ongoing project with Resonant Morim, and uh, Matt Foley is in the team, and uh, we meet. Uh, you to meet once a week. Now you know there's more than more and they have a problem. So the company is not in good shape. <laughs> See, this is what happens with work with, with wave energy. I mean, there, if I can editorialize for a second. Yeah, so there are there are a lot of good ideas, and the company goes under and the idea disappears. And then there's another good idea, and then the co company goes under and it disappears. It seems to happen all the time. So uh, uh, anyway, other questions. Yeah, for me, the, uh, the clutch, the, the, the uh, clutch idea, uh, is there a reliability uh, issue with that? There is, there is a reliability issue. Uh, the, for the passive one, so we did the test in National Lab, and we identified a failure model, one, one failure model is clutch failure. Okay, for active one, it's slightly better. The reason is, and uh, we can, you just you think about that input side, output side, this class is this two motion. And the input side is this wave or not of mass inside. But output side, we can have control of the motor. We can make that engage smoother. Ideally, this idea, we are still in the process work with that. Yeah. Thank you. So I have a follow up question. Mm -hmm. So the whole reason to use the clutch is to not have to have backlash when the uh, uh, when the ETO reverses direction, right? Yeah. I mean that, that if, if I understand correctly. So it's about efficiency because the generator side, if you you have ocean wheel and this type of motion or no time you cross zero. When you, the generator and uh, usually people tell you my generator have efficiency 99% or 95%. Keep in mind that is import, import specific particular situation. You have such kind of efficiency. But if you go far from that efficiency and you just uh, power and speed side, like engine, power and speed, okay. Sweet port is very, very narrow. This is why you drive your car. You normally drive your engine, no matter what kind of car speed, is, 1,000, 2,000 RPM, right? You want to have an engine at constant speed. Similarly here, we want our generator always at very, very nice speed and very efficient. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? 
Well, it's 4.30, so uh, let's thank our speaker again. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so we can take a second. Send your one. Yeah. Number, uh, <laughs> 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 